This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. We've made a total of 14 videos covering the 2020 5K iMac, spanning everything from our buyer's guide to various comparison videos, trying to figure out the value of this year's iMac. And we think we're finally ready to close the case and wrap everything up in this review. The main goal I wanna reach in this review is to help you make an informed decision on whether you should actually buy this iMac or skip it, and the answer changes based on what you personally care about. So let's dig deep into various topics like Apple switching to their own custom silicon chips, why it makes sense for some people to just buy this Intel iMac right now, which upgrades are actually worth it for certain workflows, and I'm gonna talk about my very important discovery about how to configure your RAM correctly for the most performance. So let's get started. We purchased and tested two different models of the iMac, the high-end base model with the eight-core CPU and the 5500 XT GPU, and we also got a top-end model with the 10-core CPU and the best 5700 XT graphics card option. When we first started comparing the 2020 iMac to other machines, like the iMac Pro, we quickly realized that for most people, the iMac is definitely a better choice, especially now that it comes with a faster SD card slot, a 1080p webcam with upgraded microphones, and an option for 10 gigabit ethernet, which all used to be huge reasons to choose the iMac Pro instead. There was also the T2 chip, which helped the iMac Pro do a great job with a lot of common video editing tasks. And now the 2020 iMac has the same T2 chip, but on top of that, it also gets a couple of bonuses like quick sync and coding support and Navi graphics hardware accelerators. One of the major downsides of last year's 5K iMac was that even the expensive Vega 48 graphics card was still the major limitation for a lot of tasks. And now the iMac can be configured with the 5700XT graphics card, which greatly improves graphics performance. This new card gave us almost 50% better FPS in the Unigen Heaven Gaming benchmark, about 50% higher timeline FPS for playing back Red Raw 8K video, and we also got perfect 60 FPS for playing back Canon C200 Raw, but the biggest difference is thanks to Apple's T2 chip specifically for encoding HEVC footage, now being over twice as fast as before. We then compared these new iMacs to the 16-inch MacBook Pro, and this year, we're finally recommending the iMac over the MacBook Pro because it's now a much better bang for the buck, especially since it gets a much better cooling system due to the much larger size. We finished off our comparisons pitting the 10-core iMac against our $15,000 Mac Pro, which has the 12-core CPU with Vega 2 graphics and a massive 192 gigs of six-channel RAM. And we found some very interesting results. For a lot of common tasks, like for video editing, there really wasn't that big of a difference, at least when comparing the price points of each Mac. The HEVC stabilization test ended up being much faster on the new iMac, because it's also utilizing the integrated graphics chip that's in the processor, which the Mac Pro doesn't have. We also exported our 12-minute How Much RAM for Mac in 2020 video, which is packed with many of the effects that we use on a daily basis, making it just about the most real-world test in terms of what we edit every day, and the Mac Pro finished exporting it only nine seconds faster. And that's because the encoding of this type of footage is taken care of by the T2 chip, which is identical on both of those Macs. By far, the biggest advantage for the Mac Pro was for processor-heavy tasks that depend on RAM and stable processor performance. The Mac Pro has a massive advantage of having 192 gigs of six-channel ECC RAM compared to only 64 gigs of dual-channel RAM on the iMac. So this led to almost triple the performance in Puget Bench for Photoshop and finishing almost twice as fast in our 500 RAW 42 megapixel Lightroom export test, and being able to build one-to-one -one previews almost twice as fast as well. And then thanks to the more reliable server-grade Xeon chip with 12 cores, the Mac Pro was able to handle almost 100 more tracks in Logic Pro 10 for music production. And the programming results were very impressive in Xcode as well, 
but the truth is that not very many people can justify the $15,000 price tag of the Mac Pro to take advantage of those gains. And even though it's upgradable, the future is still in Apple Silicon, which will likely require you to sell the Intel Mac Pro for an ARM-based silicon model down the road. And for the price tag of $3,200 for the iMac, the performance is actually really good, especially compared to the previous iMacs and basically every other Mac you can get right now. However, the most important piece of info that we discovered is that the 10-core i9 upgrade for $400 isn't worth it, even for those who only want to use it for processor heavy workloads. But before I get into the results between those two CPUs, I want to touch on the absolute best way to configure your RAM for maximum performance. So I ran a few tests that are very memory sensitive while using various RAM configurations. But before we get into those results, I want to give a huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you've been thinking about making your own website, Squarespace is literally the best way to go. I built an engaging website for my wife's cleaning business with literally no web making experience. You just choose a template, customize blocks of text and images, and easily move them around. It's incredibly simple, affordable, and it's been running flawlessly for almost two years, bringing in new clients thanks to its built-in SEO tools. So whether you're making a website for a small business or for literally anything else, go to squarespace.com for a free trial and use our custom link below when you're ready to launch to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Back to the iMac, we quickly found out that if you want 64 gigabytes of RAM, you get better performance by having four sticks instead of two, as GeekMesh 5 jumped to over 10,000 points and our Lightroom Classic export finished a minute and 40 seconds faster as well, which we didn't expect. Now there's also the question of mixing Apple's factory eight gigs of RAM with let's say 32 gigs of aftermarket RAM for a total of 40 gigabytes. This instantly resulted in memory speed dropping to 2133 megahertz, which in turn dropped multi-core performance down to around 9,300 points, as well as slowing down our Lightroom Classic export to over 29 minutes. We then moved the RAM sticks around so that the two 16 gig sticks were at the top and the two 4 gig sticks were at the bottom, as some suggested to do. And that did finally get the RAM back to running at the full 2667 megahertz speed, but then multi-core performance tanked down to 7,700 points and our Lightroom export test took a massive 42 minutes and 30 seconds. We discovered that by moving the aftermarket RAM sticks next to each other, it actually forced the RAM into single channel mode. So there are three lessons we can learn from these tests. If you know you won't be upgrading to more RAM down the line, just fill all four RAM slots to maximize performance, but be careful not to mix and match different RAM sizes like keeping the factory RAM because it can actually slow down performance. And whatever you do, do not configure your RAM in single channel mode. Now with that, let's get into why the 10 core i9 CPU upgrade isn't worth the extra $400. Based on all of our testing, we quickly figured out that the 10 core processor wasn't worth the price for a lot of tests that we ran, even the ones that greatly rely on processor performance. We tested Photoshop and Lightroom Classic Photo Editing, and in both of those tests, the 10 core wasn't worth it. We then tested Logic Pro 10 Music Production, and the 10 core barely helped at all, only handling six more tracks before overloading the system. Xcode programming performance barely improved either, only saving 12 seconds compared to the 8 core i7 while building our MaxTech Xcode project. And then for video editing in Final Cut Pro 10, we quickly realized that the 10 core was doing nothing for performance. It was simply the $500 graphics upgrade that led to any performance gains. And we even found out that in some tests that were processor dependent, the 8 core was actually slightly faster because it runs at faster clock speeds under load. Now I do want to mention that it's not that the 10 core i9 is underwhelming. In fact, it's faster than a Mac Pro's 12 core Xeon CPU in terms of the reliable Cinebench R20 stress test. It's just that this year's base 8 core i7 is extremely fast, 
over 20% faster than last year's 8-core i9, which you had to pay an extra $400 for. So how in the world is that possible? Well, Apple seems to be power limiting the i9s, but not the i7s. And to prove that, the 2020 8-core hits 161 watts under load, compared to 120 watts last year. And the 10-core can use up to 151 watts, still less than this year's 8-core. So please, don't waste your money and just stick to the i7, which makes the 2020 iMac an incredible value, as it provides 10-core i9 performance for the price of last year's 6-core i5. And to make things even better, not everyone needs the $500 5700 XT graphics, which in turn brings the price down even more, from $3,200 for the top-end spec all the way down to $2,300. So let me explain why not everybody needs the better graphics. For starters, graphics does nothing for processor-heavy tasks like photo editing, programming, and music production. And for video editing with common 4K formats, the 5500 XT has the exact same hardware decoders and encoders as the highest end graphics. And it also has enough raw power for most people that are editing H.264 and HVC footage. The $500 5700 XT was really only worth it for three things that we tested. Video editing with raw codecs like C200 and red raw footage, 3D graphics rendering, and gaming where it was almost 50% faster. So for those tasks, the $500 upgrade can actually be worth the price, unlike the 10-core CPU upgrade. But if you're not doing any of that, then the $2,300 iMac model with the 8-core CPU and the 5500 XT graphics gives you the most bang for the buck we've ever seen in any iMac. In fact, this year, we've decided to keep this exact model for our daily video editing needs, instead of the top-end model that we usually keep, because that $2,300 iMac is only slightly slower than the 10-core 5700 XT model, while being a massive $900 cheaper. And that says a lot. So now that we know all of that, there's only one question that remains. Do you buy this Intel iMac, or do you wait for the future Apple Silicon models? Well, once again, I think the answer really depends on what you personally care about. There are some people that are upset with Apple for not redesigning the iMac for the past eight years, and there are others who don't really care. The latter are more focused on the performance, the feature set, and getting their work done faster, more reliably, and more conveniently. And for those kinds of people, this new iMac is great, offering excellent performance at a much better value than we've seen in years. And now Apple has finally packed in some long-awaited features, like a faster SD card slot, 10 gigabit Ethernet for only $100 more, a 1080p webcam with better microphones, SSDs at the base price, and hardware accelerators with Apple's T2 chip and AMD's Navi graphics that make a huge impact on real-world performance. So if you care about those things, you can't really go wrong by buying the 2020 iMac. The biggest issue with the future Apple Silicon models is that we have no way of knowing how well third-party apps will run on them due to using the new ARM-based architecture, and we don't really know how long it could take for those apps to get fully optimized. We already know that running the full version of Windows using Boot Camp is not happening on Apple Silicon, so this question is a no-brainer for those who need that functionality. And on top of that, we don't really know when those Apple Silicon iMacs will get released. Most leaks and rumors are pointing to the first ARM-based iMac getting released early next year. But that's only for the 24-inch model, which isn't focused on high performance. The larger model, which will replace the 27-inch Intel iMac, is actually rumored to be coming in the second half of 2021. And that's a long time to wait for those who really need a fast and value-packed iMac right now, which is quite literally why we bought this Intel iMac. But in defense of Apple Silicon, I'm very confident in a few different things. Apple's chips are going to run using less power, they'll run cooler, and the fan noise will be going down. And in terms of performance, I'm extremely confident that all of Apple's native apps, like Final Cut and Xcode, are going to run extremely fast, because Apple has been optimizing them 
for their custom silicon for a long time now. And Apple also mentioned that they've been working with Microsoft and Adobe to get all of their apps running natively on Apple silicon as well. So that's pretty reassuring for people who use those apps a lot. And I have a feeling that Apple is going to be packing their chips with hardware accelerators, which will greatly improve performance without requiring a lot of raw power. Just like we saw in the video editing results between the 5500 XT and the 5700 XT graphics cards. So my honest advice to all of you guys is that if you don't care about bootcamp, if you don't rely on third party apps, and if your current computer will be just fine for another year, then I would definitely recommend waiting for Apple Silicon Max. But if you don't really care for the Apple Silicon transition, or if you doubt the performance matching up to the current Intel models, then just go for this 2020 iMac and enjoy reliable performance right now. And you can eventually switch to an Apple Silicon Mac a couple of years down the road when everything has been optimized and all of the apps that you use are confirmed to be working well on the new custom Apple chips. But if we disregard all of that and just look at the 2025K iMac for what it is, it's a fantastic machine with much better value and way more performance than ever before while also fixing most of our previous complaints at the same time. So there you guys have it. If this review was helpful, go ahead and tap the like button below and click the circle above to subscribe. And you can definitely check out our 2020 iMac playlist right over there to see all of our comparison videos. And definitely check out our Apple product merch down in our merch shelf below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.